fuckers. I don't think so. Yeah, I like it. You wears a sweater a lot. I do. You wear it a lot. I always know <sighs> when you're wearing it. I just felt like being a looking like today. Arthur today. Being a little cozy today. All right. Sit hey, down now. Here we it's go, a boys. wonderful time of day. What's going on, all you saints and sinners? Welcome to Confessions of a DIY Musician. We are your hosts, Marina City. I am singer Ryan Argas, and I am joined by my two very best friends, guitarist Toto Brinajiv and Let's drummer go. Eric Summers hey, This yo. is a podcast that if you are an independent musician or artist, and you are looking to learn about new things, maybe how to make different kind of content, how to do get your stuff on radio, playlists, and whatever, that is what this podcast uh, show is about. And if you're just a fan of our band, Marina City, you're going to love this podcast, too, because we talk about all the the behind-the-scenes things that we do as an independent DIY, do-it-yourself musician. And in this episode, we are talking about, it is called, Why the F Did You Reimagine Your Music? Is that what it's called? I don't know. I just, how do you like that? How do you like them apples? Hey, just, we're getting the clickbaity titles. Yeah, yeah I'm trying my best. <laughs> I like but, it. We'll it have was a whole, on the fly. I like well, it. Yeah, it was on Would the fly. Would you click on that? Would you click, click on, on that? that? Yeah, I'd click on that. <laughs> I'd click <Yeah>. that. <laughs> <laughs> I'd click that. <laughs> um, and uh, some new additions to the podcast is that we have Marina City mugs. Now, these are some older mugs, some old G mugs that you'd see right here. If you see it on the actual podcast video on YouTube, you can see that right there. Uh, if you water. want mugs, if you're someone that's like, yo, I like the idea of mugs, we do have some on sale, but they're probably sold out at this point when you're listening to this podcast. So maybe we'll do some more. Anyways, yeah. I was trying to do some mug ASMR. Just. You know, we're actually supposed to act like we're drinking out of here, and I'm just like, look at this. Yeah, I know. yeah look like, at our mugs. Like, I'm Eric's clinging like, it. Clinging on it. Clinging on it. <laughs> Sounds as full can, of water. As you can see, it's not. Uh, I mean, I usually have some coffee in here, but yeah. to be quite honest, I don't know how clean these are. I'm looking down the yeah, pipe, not, down the barrel clean. here. No, and, uh, they are spotless, and spotless you actually yeah. don't have to clean them. That's yeah, the don't craziest have to clean, thing. That's they, a clean they, self-cleaning mug. It's like one of those new things in 2023. Yeah, dude. Come on, 2024 is probably when this is out. Oh, yeah? As you know, we are pre-recording these, apparently. Uh, what's actually really cool is that uh, I don't drink tea anymore. Actually, and um, I don't know why this is really cool, but I don't really drink tea as much anymore. I drink pineapple juice with cayenne pepper and honey. So if you are a Dude, singer, that's I'm sure we'll talk about this. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why that was like the only thing I could transition with, but that's a lame thing to say. You know, it's cool. But if you are a singer out there and you want to get your voice to be in tip-top shape, if you have a show the next day after you sing a lot, or your sh- or your voice sounds tired, or whatever the case is. I'm telling you, my secret juice. You can get it on for $39.99 at the Ryan Argas store. Pineapple juice, cayenne pepper, and honey. I'm just kidding about selling no, it, but you can today's definitely episode get it. brought to you by but, Dole. <laughs> Dole, yeah. Is Dole. that good or is it like uh, one actually, of those healthy things that doesn't taste you know, I, ain't good at all? You know what? Uh, you're supposed to also add, add ginger to it, um, but I don't. That's not very good. That's so not good. Yeah, I'm that's pretty not good. good. No. I'm pretty good with those three, and it really helps a lot. And actually, it tastes better than tea in the throat coat. And the thing about throat coat, everyone wants to do it, but it actually dries you out. Yeah. Uh, and because it actually like literally coats your throat. Whereas it sounds so gross. All the different <laughs> things that I said. Yeah, the pineapple juice, the cayenne pepper, the honey. Those are. Uh, anti-inflammatory they do coat your throat um, more naturally it's just a way better natural drink and i swear by it i may feel tired but the next day if i drink that i'm ready to rock and roll and you guys know i'm singing constantly all the time i mean i just had a four-hour show on friday a five-hour show on saturday and then we're doing this podcast on sunday so yeah you know a good comparison for guitarists is uh you dip your fingers in warm wax and let it dry and then you play guitar are you being serious no. <laughs> Dude, I was like, I like, I was like, wow, this is, ah. you got a lot of warm wax just chilling in your house. <laughs> just, you just see like, like formations of fucking fingers in my wax at home. <laughs> wow. Well, um, ladies and gentlemen, let's get to the actual topic and why the fuck did you reimagine your song? Wait, now, how, what, that's what it's called? That was wait, a tangent. Hold on. Yeah. Yeah. How, how, wait, how re... How songs are reimagined. What, How, what is it? <laughs> uh, I How just you, put the clickbaity title. Yeah. I was thinking is why Doesn't the matter. fuck did you reimagine your but song? But this, this yeah. is about how to reimagine your songs. Yes, yeah. basically. And also why. Like, I really want to talk about sure. why it's good to reimagine some songs. And also how we've done it in the past. And I feel like fans of Marina City have come accustomed to the fact that we are probably going to do it in almost every song that we release is some yeah. kind of reimagined version yeah, yeah. of it. Whether, yeah. whether it's full band or acoustic, well, exactly, it's, it's right. not going to be like the record. Right. Yeah. And and can I I feel like 
I I want to I want to quickly start this off with with why I think this started, <laughs> and I think it's because we have a burning passion for uh or a burning hatred maybe for yep. when people do acoustic songs of their regular songs and they just play the guitar riffs on an acoustic guitar exactly the same. Yeah, it's like. It's the word. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm sure people listening to this are feeling very attacked right now. But dude, like, yeah, just breakdowns on an acoustic guitar. Does not sound good. Oh, people do this. Yeah, the, the, you're absolutely right. The way this all started was that we had to do acoustic shows. And we're like, I don't want to do just a half ass version of the song. Yeah. Like the last thing I want to do is someone who's like, oh, I get to hear your acoustic. Okay, great. Now I just hear a worse version of the actual song. Yeah. If, if you have to like say, oh, this, this would sound way better if I was like running it through my pedal setup. Like <laughs> yeah. you've already, you've lost. It's- you've already <laughs> lost it. Yeah. Uh, so with that said, if you have an acoustic show that's happening, if you're playing one of those so far events, which was, which we do a lot all yeah. the time. Uh, if you are just doing something that you need to switch it up. A good way is to reimagine the song. And that necessarily doesn't mean, doesn't also mean acoustic, just a reimagine. Maybe it's a remix, whatever the case is. But for this probably conversation, we're going to talk about more the acoustic stuff and why to do it. One is to have a lot of cool versions uh, so that your fans can hear them recorded. Mm-hmm. Uh, we like to record our these versions and, and come up with content. <laughs> and if you know, content is king. Right, all the yep. TikToks, the you YouTube's, whatever you need to have a bunch of videos as much as possible, and reimagining the song could be a really great way for people to re-listen to that song. Like, oh my god, I remember I love that song. Here's a new version of it. I really love it. Or I remember that they released that song. I got to go back and go check it out. And I think it's helped us a lot, especially in our reimagined version of Better Weather. We've done that so many times that people, it's got a new breath of fresh air, a new like fresh outlook on life whatever the wording is that people are like oh i gotta go check out that song once again yeah i mean it's like in a way you're extending this the 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 life of the song i'm sorry yeah i was gonna say song of the life yeah Yeah. (laughs) but speaking of life actually i was gonna use life our Mm -hmm. song as an example because for those of you don't know uh we have a song called life from our record the crush and it's a pretty up-tempo song um very fat, like, you know, it's not like metal blazing fast, but that BPM is pretty up there. And we decided to do a reimagined version of that whole entire album. Actually, it's called The Crush 2.0. You can listen to it on Spotify. And that version of life, the reimagined version, is the exact opposite. And I, um, that's one way of doing, I think, reimagined songs. Yeah. It's you can either do like a whole contrast of what the original song actually sounds like and that's exactly what happened with that one is that we went the slow version and if you go listen to uh, our, our slow version of life it's it's the absolute opposite of what we have on the actual record and i think that's one way of doing the reimagined um yeah stuff. and again with the content is king kind of thing is that we fed the algorithm the all god rhythm or whatever you call it you call it the the al god rhythm the al god yeah. rhythm <laughs> Like, you know, the, you need the algorithm. Please so the that, gods. <laughs> yeah. So that Spotify keeps like showing your music to people yeah. and us re-releasing life again in a different version not only gives a reason for fans to want to go listen to it, but it gives it a reason for the algorithm to just push Marina City a little bit farther on Spotify. Sometimes people would end up happening with music is that you spend so much time writing a song, you promote it, promote it, promote it. And then the day it's released, it's like the last day that you promote the song. Mm-hmm. And then you think, oh, everyone heard it. So I don't need to promote it anymore. Or maybe you take like three more days and then you're just like, oh, what's the next thing? Yeah. And what we're trying to tell you is that that song can not only be reimagined and re-released and retried and, and try it again and promote it and promote it, but it also can take on another like life of its own. Like for example, um, a great example is Cruel Summer by uh taylor swift who so uh it's a it's a little <laughs> little artist she's she's really blown up um taylor swift had this song called Cru- cruel summer that came out during the lover record and i'm not too sure like the success of the record but i will say based off of her other records that are massive hits i'm not sure if that record was close to her biggest records i it, it I don't know if it's necessarily a flop. I'm sure Swifties would be pissed off. I would say that, but yeah, it right. definitely wasn't. You know, it didn't win a Grammy. It didn't, a, you know. a flop for Taylor Swift. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's Taylor the best Swift record terms. that we've yeah, ever yeah, made, yeah. right? Um, but anyways, uh, <laughs> "Cruel Summer" wasn't even a single on that record. Yeah. They had like the Brendan Urie single, and then 
it was like basically that record was kind of gone and then she like went into a cabin and came out as a folk folklore and evermore and everything like that and then just like changed her whole career to even be bigger than what it was but the reason why i bring this up is that four years later after that song came out it's really starting it's the number one song in america right now now you're probably hearing this podcast way later but you can imagine that right now when i'm talking talking to you guys this is the number one song in america is cruel summer a four-year-old song wow and why is that well there's a couple different reasons one big thing is that she's playing it live at her big tours and she's and it's just like She's reimagining it a little bit more. People are just like, oh my God, I remember this song. It was so good. I got to go listen to it again and become the number one song on Spotify. And the other thing too is that she, she's re-releasing her songs differently than us because she was in a legal battle that she was like, oh, it would be way better if I own my, my master. So I'm going to re-release these songs. We'll have a whole record. We'll have a whole podcast of what masters and everything are. I think that's going to be a great podcast explaining the difference between publishing and masters for those who don't truly understand. But really short-lived, a master is a recording of the song, and the publishing is the song itself. So we, if I was to write Mary Had a Little Lamb, I own the writing of Mary Had a Little Lamb. And then if someone was to record it, they can own the recording of Mary Had a Little Lamb. I don't necessarily own that recording. But if Tortor goes records it and Eric goes records two different versions of Mary Had a Little Lamb, they own it. But they, I own the song. So, so you own the uh, publishing. Yeah. We own the master yeah. of our version. Right, of your version. So with Taylor, in this situation, she, uh, I think Scooter Braun owed her, owned her stuff. Uh, she doesn't like Scooter Braun, so she's like, you know what? I'm going to re-record all these songs, and I'm going to own the master, and I'm going to own the, the publishing. publishing. Yeah. So now she's she's making even more money. So with all, the, with that, all, that, blah, with all that being said, uh, with her new Eras tour, she's going out there and playing songs that people haven't heard in a long time, one of them being Cruel Summer. And not only is she feeding the algorithm by re-releasing songs, again, in some version, some different versions... But two, some of those old songs, people are like, oh, yeah, I got to go check that out again. I really love it. And now it's the number one song in America. Crazy. Yeah. Just like our song. Yeah. Life. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but yeah, I think reimagining, like, it's just fun for everybody. Yeah. It's fun for us as the artists to, you know, think of a different gear of how to write this other song, how to reimagine it. It's fun for the, for the audience member as well. You know, they get to hear another song that they've heard before just in a different way. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, and I think the, the key aspect to consider is like what what makes a song different, right? And it's never been and I I think like we talked about earlier, this initially came about because people wanted us to play acoustic shows. And I think the the common thought process for most people is acoustic means quieter. And in reality, acoustic doesn't mean quieter. Acoustic just means a different vibe. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So if you stop thinking in terms of Stop thinking in terms of like dynamically like dynamic stuff. think more in terms of timbre and texture and vibe. Yeah. And that is like, that's like the, the true key to like a, in my opinion, a proper reimagining. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And I think sometimes when you reimagine a song, the lyrics and the actual vibe of the song could take on a whole completely new meaning. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to use our example of our song, Keep Your Faith in Me. We released this like three different times. And the first time we released it was a full on rock version. I mean, it's like there's a breakdown in it. It's just yeah, full drum on solo. big drum solo in it. It's just huge. And I think at the time people hear it and you're just like, yeah, this is a kick ass song. It's a lot of fun. I'm just rocking and rolling. And then we bring it down really quiet. And then we bring it down even more quiet in our new record that we're doing with this acoustic record. And all of a sudden that pumped up rock and roll song that you were listening to you hear it again and you're just like wait I'm, why am i feeling emotional like i didn't realize that these lyrics i don't realize that this song meant this uh another great example just recently i saw a video of someone doing an acoustic version of damn it by blink 182 hmm. and typically blink 182 is kind of a goofy funny uh band and their song damn it is typically just like this iconic pop punk song and the the chorus of it and it happened once again y'all turn to a friend someone who understands and then you hear it acoustic and it happened once again and and it becomes much sudden, more emotional it's so emotional it starts to hit the, the you song different. all of a sudden you realize it's like this guy sees this girl and they're at a movie theater and she, 
and I'll wave and you'll smile and like, and that'll be okay. And then you guys both know it'll never happen again. And you turn to a friend to kind of console you. And it's just something that you don't take in consideration when you're hearing the more rock and roll version of these things. It goes from an angry song to a a, a sort of like self-reflective, tormented, you know. Yeah. And that's what, what we really try to do with our acoustic songs is that I, I personally like to do the acoustic songs a lot just because I get to show off maybe my range vocally wise. I get to really play on the dynamics. So again, as the singer, it's a lot more fun. And to be honest with you, sometimes when you're in a studio and you're recording, there's so many takes, you're always looking for the perfect take. And you're like, then you got to double it. And then you got to make sure that every syllable is perfect and everything is just so it's catchy. It's right there. And I like that to an extent because those songs become so much more catchier and that's the reason why those songs are what they are today but it's really nice to sing better weather or roses or uh faith or you know what have you and having these songs be like a little not perfect and i can sing a little bit differently and it just feels like those songs are just so more so much more vulnerable totally yeah i it's that's what it is really those songs become much more vulnerable yeah Especially Roses. Yeah. You strip back of the vocoder. If you listen to our song Roses, um, we really came... The song's about my grandfather passing away and it's the day that he died and me having to tell my mom uh, that her father passed away and seeing him in the hospital and uh, all the emotions that I was feeling at that time. And in the original version, we have a vocoder that plays with it. And I think... One, it just sounded cool and it was something that was really inspirational on that. But also I think what was cool about that moment was that it feels like an out-of-body experience in this song. And that's kind of what I'm kind of talking about here. And so when the original version hits, when we have all the kind of like electronic versions of it, it's almost like this out-of-body experience uh, kind of talking uh, what I'm experiencing at that time of seeing my grandfather in the hospital or then having to talk to my mom about her father passing. But then when we do the acoustic version and it's like, it's just my vocal and a piano, it just feels like it's just gut wrenching and it was, it was hard to sing it again at, at times. Yeah. All right. We're going to stop here for, uh, we're going to take a break and talk about our sponsors. So our sponsors today are marinacityband.com. Yes, you heard it here, folks. Marinacityband.com is where you can get all the cool things if you like Marina City. And if you're following this podcast, chances are that you do like Marina City. So you, of course, can always subscribe to this podcast where you can get all the news and all the podcast information of Confessions of a DIY Musician. But we do have merchandise at marinacityband.com where you can get hoodies, sweaters t-shirts maybe mugs if they're still in business you know what i'm saying if they're not sold out fanny packs belt bags whatever you name them they're all right there at marinacityband.com and pick yourself up something nice you deserve it of course we have the discord where we really want to make sure that you guys are following if you have a discord or if you don't have a discord make sure you sign up and get one and subscribe to our discord where we have dozens of different kind of channels like the venting channel where you can vent about the hard days at work that you need to talk to someone about the feeling much better channel where you just want to literally talk about all the good things that are happening gloating it's a great time to gloat uh and also all the different kind of things that we do talk about the simulation where you can get a specialized badge and the only way you can get a badge if you do certain kind of things so it's really cool stuff you want to collect seven of them you can go on the discord to check that out lastly make sure that you go on our text line. Our text line is the best way to get information before anyone else gets it. So you want to text us your name and your zip code at 815-406-6209. That's 815-406-6209 to get all the latest news of Marina City World before anyone gets it. We will always make sure we do that. So ladies and gentlemen, that is our sponsor for the <laughs> evening. Um yeah. We are <laughs> now the last thing I want to talk about is going into the last half of this podcast. I want to talk about how to actually do it. What are you thinking about? Now we talked about why. We talked about the benefits of it. We mm-hmm. talked about how it can the like how great it can be. But when you sit there, let's talk about one song. Let's talk about <clears throat> either better weather keep your faith in me what song do you want to talk about what was the easy way to really strip back and what was our process and how we actually came about doing that 
I mean, I, I feel like with, with every single one, it has to start with an intention, yeah. like, like something, something that we're specifically trying to achieve. Right. Like, uh, like for example, life, which isn't an, an acoustic version, yeah. like that was like, all right, what if we take our most high speed energetic song on our album? And then we completely flipped it to be the yeah. opposite effect. So we made it kind of super dark and vibey and lo-fi. Um, so we it was it was like our challenge to ourselves to do that for faith and better weather. Actually, I would say faith started the same way. It was like again, let's have our, one of our most energetic songs be like a ballad yeah. and see how, what that feels like. You know, it's like uh, <laughs> what's that? What's that movie? That thing you do, right? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> With Tom the, Hanks the and, wonders and yeah, 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 where they they take their their super energetic song and they make it. Or no, it's a ballad at first, and they play it really fast, and then it becomes like the big hit scene yeah, in the movie. Yeah. So you know, reimagining it's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I two things I want to talk about life, our life two point that we put on the crush two point If you can listen on Spotify, um, that really came out because we actually wrote this song pre pandemic, but then it made even more sense when the pandemic hit, and we we're like, oh, I feel like we need to like own into that a little bit mm-hmm. more. And like really talk about the kind of gruesome effects of life and how like really dark it could be, especially while we were quarantined. At that point, we hadn't yeah. seen each other for a really long time uh, in person. And so we actually have a recording of Governor Pritzker, Pritzker like talking about a speech about having to be indoors in quarantine and stuff like that in there. And I think that it just makes that song a whole new life to it. Uh, but with better weather, I think sometimes... John Feldman told us that a great song can be played on acoustic. It doesn't need all the drums. It doesn't need all the Mm -hmm. stuff like that. And we just felt that when we were writing Better Weather, Toter, you came with it and was like, hey, I got this riff and I'm pretty sure you played it on acoustic. And then we're like, well, how can we make that a rock song? Because, you know, we're a rock band. Right. And then we were just like, wait. There's some vulnerability in yeah. that. Let's try that again. Let's see for how sure. we can bring that all the way back. I mean, including faith as well. Like, if it wasn't for the choruses, I mean, it's pretty ballady. Yeah. Ballad E. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's uh, it's one of those songs, like, especially Better Weather. Uh, we just kind of took the the main riff from it, you know, played it on acoustic guitar, add your vocals on top of it, and maybe some layers, you know, of Small very things. minimal piano strings, and that and that really was it. Um, you know, it's just one of those, it's one of those songs where you and your best friend can, um, just pick up a guitar and go sing it by, uh, some fire, fire pit or yeah. something like that. You know, get some marshmallows out with some chocolate. <laughs> it's, got, it's got anyway, here's Wonderwall vibes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that, uh, with, with faith, you know, sometimes I, I wouldn't be afraid to even change a tiny bit of the like BPM or the melody line a little bit melody line slightly. I I don't know if when we did the loss doesn't mean alone a record, which was a live acoustic record that one we really did like um, change the melody lines and a Mm -hmm. lot of those things to reimagine it. But I, I would just say, don't be afraid to, to do that. Don't be afraid to give a little bit of a change to it. And just make people go, oh, that's really interesting. That's really fun that you guys did something like that. Again, like sometimes it's doing the thing that's the most uncomfortable and breaking it down all the way that makes it the most interesting. Yeah. 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 And I think there's a lot of space for dynamics in uh, acoustic songs. Yeah. Um, some, you know, maybe from the choruses to the bridges, you know, having the bridges be super quiet. You know, have a nice little dropout and stuff like that. So I think those are a little bit more controllable when it comes down to the reimagined versions. Yeah. Um, and, and, and yeah, I was going to say something, but I forgot. Okay, never mind. Disregard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that ultimately one of the big reasons why we released uh, this acoustic record was because we felt that it would be nice to bring back some of those old songs that we still really loved, but we didn't feel back then it's fit our style or like the, those versions still fit where we are at as grown adults. So re-recording them uh, with a more mature voice, a mature 
uh, styling, mature playing, with breaking it down to a reimagined acoustic version, just again makes people go, "Oh my god, I remember those songs." Yeah. The algorithm goes, "Oh my god, you're releasing more music," and on top of that, you become creatively more interested. Like you, it's a it's a great exercise for you as a creative. Yeah, yeah, it's like a writing prompt. To yeah, be like let's uh, let's try this song this way. Uh, we did a cover of No Diggity, <clears throat> mm-hmm. and that is, in fact, that version of No Diggity, you can listen to it on Spotify, is so different from the original that the engineer we were working with at the time told us he never even heard the song. He thought it was an original. Yeah. And we were I like, no, people, actually didn't a lot know of that. people feel like that. Yeah, he was like, he was like, I never even heard this song. I was like, no, it's No Diggity. And then when we played it for, or later on, he was like, oh my God, I didn't even realize it's a cover. Yeah. It was like, how can you make your version of the song mm-hmm. and how do you do and you strip it for parts and then you build it back up again yeah. take it w- w- no diggity we went all the way back to i think just the piano riff dun 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 and like okay so how do we make that cool right there and what would you do as an artist and for us we're like well we need to have a solo because we have solos in every fucking song it also uh, should have chord changes that song doesn't have chord changes <laughs> yeah yeah we added some things yeah <laughs> yeah so it was like okay let's add some chord changes to make this a little bit more interesting and we um, transcribe that one i think it's a vocal line i do it on guitar the dum dum yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, you know, there's, there's a lot of creativity. It's just fun. It's yeah. just it's just really yeah. fun to do reimagined songs. Yeah, don't... And, and so, I mean, I don't think anything <laughs> we ever do is the exact way. I think we've had reimagined songs for pretty much every record, right? Yeah. We've had reimagined songs from or, Ron or at the Terminal, very, or The at Crush. The, yeah. Or at the very least, we when we and play a song live, we never play it yeah. like the record. Yeah. It's always yeah. a yeah. little bit reimagined. It's always... And that's always... The, again, you, <clears throat> you heard the record. Yeah. Like, right. when you play it live... Like, of course, we're going to play all the parts that you expect to hear, but then we just do a little extra to make it a little bit more fun, to get a little bit different experience yeah. little extra than just being at your meat. bedroom. You know, extra guitar solos usually. Yeah. yeah. You know, one <laughs> or two or three or four or five yeah. or six or seven. Yeah. And all, all that is, is how do you do it? Figure out what the most important parts of the song is. And once you have that, then build it again. Build it up yeah. from the ground up. Have some fun with it. Have some fun with it. Yeah. People want to hear something cool. So... All right, guys, that is the episode today is Why the Fuck Did You Reimagine Your Song? I hope that you got some cool things about it. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and to this podcast. Make sure you tell a friend about it, especially if you guys are starting up a band or you're just trying to get into music. Um, And obviously, go listen to our music. That would be really awesome, too. (laughs) That's the reason why we do this as well. Uh, Hopefully, connect with it. If there are topics that you want to hear from us, then please reach out at the crush at marinacityband.com. Ch- again, any kind of thing. If you're like, hey, this is what you guys can do better for the podcast, this is some great options that you guys can do with the crush at marinacityband.com. Also, management at marinacityband.com. You can m- email us to book us for an event, for a show, for a house show. Uh, if you guys work at a college and you want to bring us to your college, you guys want us to film the podcast there and talk to music business industry people, whatever the case is, please hit, hit us, us up, up at management at marina city band.com. We'll probably get a new, uh, email for this, for this specifically. So yeah, when we do get a new email for this specifically, so many. yeah, marina city podcast, at, at Gamail. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys so much for listening. It means the world to us. We will see you next time. Cheers. Adios. Bye bye. <laughs>